it is time for some poly spray, the UV protection. Poly spray also provides a sandable fill coat for the color coats that follow. The aluminum powder in poly spray settles out very quickly, so you'll need to mix it thoroughly before thinning and then spraying it. Poly spray is thinned four parts poly spray to one part thinner. Remember, use the appropriate thinner for the temperature. It is sprayed just the same as poly brush using the cross coat procedure. The plan is to spray two cross coats or four total coats, sand, then spray on one more cross coat. As always, before beginning to spray, clean the surfaces with C2210 paint cleaning solvent and wipe it lightly with a tack cloth. Pour the thinned poly spray through a filter as you put it in your gun. Start with the perimeter each time you spray a coat. Apply one cross coat and let it dry. Don't try to do both cross coats in one day unless you're in a big hurry. If necessary though, you can spray one cross coat in the morning and one in the afternoon. You must allow enough time between cross coats for the solvents to evaporate. Once both cross coats have been sprayed and the surface has been allowed to dry overnight, lightly sand large open areas of fabric and the edges of all pinked tapes and doublers. A lot of sanding shouldn't be necessary if you've been careful with all of the previous steps. Wet sanding is recommended using 320 or 400 grit sandpaper. Be sure to clean off the sanding residue as you go along with a sponge and clean water. Be careful with the sandpaper. It doesn't take much pressure to sand through all the coatings right down to the fabric and fuzz it up. Don't ever sand over a hard object like rivets, screws, or rib lacing over hard edges like the leading edge skin or trailing edge. After the surface has been sanded, prepare it for the last cross coat of poly spray by cleaning the entire unit with C2210 paint cleaning solvent and then running a tack rag lightly over the surface. Spray one more cross coat on the entire surface. Once the last cross coat has dried, it's a good time to heat up your pencil tip soldering iron and burn drain holes on the bottom of your surface. These are required to be one quarter inch in diameter. If you have elected not to use drain grommets, the simplest way to get perfectly rounded, neat holes that are in a straight line is like this. First, using your straight needle or a little awl, determine the lowest point at the intersection of the trailing edge and rib. Make a small hole there. Next, measure this distance and draw a line with your number two pencil at each location where you want a drain hole. Use the needle or awl to punch a small guide hole at each location. Although you are only required to have one hole per bay, we are going to put drain holes on each side of every rib. That is also acceptable and will provide more circulation of air inside the surface. Put the soldering iron into a guide hole and leave it long enough for the fabric and coatings to melt. Remove the soldering iron and immediately insert the end of your pencil. Allow the area to cool a few seconds and remove the pencil. A perfect one quarter inch hole. Be sure and wipe the tip of the iron before burning each hole. Drain holes are burned before the color coat is applied. If you burn them after painting color, when you pull the soldering iron out of the hole, a rim of silver poly spray will be pulled out onto the color. Congratulations! You are finished with the covering steps.